أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وإنه لتنزيل رب العالمين نزل به الروح الأمين على قلبك لتكون من المنثرين بلسان عربي مبين وإنه لفي زبر الأولين أولم يكن لهم آية أن يعلمه علماء بني إسرائيل رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي فالحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم أما بعد As the surah began it started uh, Allah Azza wa Jal gave us signs to ponder over. And they were in the beginning creation. And then after that, one after another, the lessons learned from different nations, starting with Musa alayhi salam, then Ibrahim alayhi salam, then a succession of quick mentions, Nuh alayhi salam and other messengers. And now we reach the end. And the entire, this entire point of bringing up all these lessons was, the undercurrent was, Quran itself is not enough. Give us something else. Quran is not enough. So Allah says, is that enough? Is that enough of a sign? There's a sign in it for there's there's a sign for them in this story, in this lesson, in this history, in this account, in this account, in this account. And at the end of the surah, Allah says, actually, let me reintroduce them to the Quran. Maybe they don't realize what the Quran is. That's why they're asking for something else. Wa innahu la tanzilu rabbil alamin. No doubt, it in fact is the revelation that which is sent down by the Master of all nations. نَزَلَ بِهِ الرُّوحُ amin. You know how all the messengers said, I am an honest messenger, I am an honest messenger, I am an honest messenger. Allah says, this came down at the, hand, uh, at the hands of the honest ruh, meaning Jibreel alayhi salam. So the messenger that delivers it to the honest messenger himself is honest. Meaning Jibreel alayhi salam's honesty. عَلَىٰ قَلْبِكَ He brings it down upon your heart, meaning the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam. لِتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُنذِرِينَ So that you can become from those who warn. Every single uh, prophet that's mentioned in this surah, none of them gave good news in this surah. All of them gave warnings. Oh, no, nobody talked about Jannah. Nobody talked about if you believe this is going to happen. All of them talked about, I've come to warn you clearly. And I'm not asking you for money. So at the end also, you've been given, this Qur'an has been given to you, and one of its fundamental functions is, so you can become from those who warn. And what more can you ask for? It's in bilisan, in Arabi, in mubin. It's in clear Arabic speech. And clarifying Arabic speech. The quality of revelation in that a few things now, you won't taste the warning of the Qur'an really genuinely unless you take it in the Arabic. You have to be motivated to learn this language. Whatever you can. Whatever you can learn. And that word Allah will make easy for you. But once you do its warnings will hit you like never before when you read them in the original. When you listen to them in the original. بِلِسَانِ الْعَرَبِيَ مُبِينَ The other thing about the, the Qur'an that really fascinates me is that Allah calls two things clear and clarifying. By the way, the word mubin as an adjective was used already for the snake. The snake was, you know, was mubin. فَإِذَا هِيَ ثُعْبَانٌ مُبِين The python. Because when somebody saw that python turn into what it was from the staff, from the stick, there's no doubt left. There's absolutely no... It clarified everything that Musa had been talking about. That's what he was saying. Can I show you something? That's what it was. It had that quality. Quran is called Mubin. Arabic is called Mubin. In the Quran. Allah says, إِنَّا أَنزَلَّهُ قُرْآنًا عَرَبِيًا قُرْآنًا عَرَبِيًا but Qur'an also, um, there are several ayat in which Qur'an's adjective is actually mubin. And then Arabi, bilisanin Arabiyin, mubin. Now, what's the point of that? The point is that the, the clarity of the Qur'an rests upon the clarity of the Arabic language. They're, they're tied together. They're tied together. Most of the controversies in Islamic studies, most of the ayat that are misinterpreted or given a twist or we should reinvent the meanings of certain ayat, etc., etc. I have come to discover in my own studies over the last 10 years, the most comprehensive responses to those kinds of controversial interpretations, 
and coming back to the norm doesn't lie in anything the way it lies in the language. When you genuinely do Arabic language research into the ayah, the controversies disappear. The misinterpretations disappear. But it has to be not easy Arabic, clear Arabic. In other words, it has to be thorough study of the language. So that's, you know, and you have to be true to the book, which means you have to be true to its language. Bilisanin, Arabiyin, Mubin. But this is being told, I mean, I'm going on a tangent, but this is being told here in this surah, because Allah is saying, look, you have the best possible teacher, the best possible curriculum, and it's actually being executed, the lesson plans are actually in your own language, in language you can understand very, very clearly. It should have made it abundantly clear to you that these words are not his. This is such an, clearly an Arabic that the Prophet himself is not capable of, or no human being for that matter is capable of. That should be clear to you from just the Arabic of this Qur'an. I'm reading the Qur'an to you guys and explaining briefly. But if you are listening to its recitation, if a Qari knows what he's doing, it's mesmerizing. Especially surahs with short ayat. If, especially with surahs with short ayat, you would, you'll be taken on a ride. You'll be, taken, you'll be like, wow. And this was the original. The Qur'an was originally recited. tartila. It has this effect in its recitation. That even though the translation is important, I can't maintain that rhythm. So you know some people can just start bust out reciting in the middle of talking. I can't do that. But my recommendation to you guys, once you listen and understand a surah, you have to listen to it being recited. It's the, it's the necessary icing on the cake. It's necessary. Because that's part of the original divine experience. It's supposed to be there, that recitation. It has this effect. وَإِنَّهُ لَفِي زُبُرِ الْأَوَّلِينَ and no doubt it is also found in the earliest zubur, meaning large pieces of scripture, scrolls. In earlier scrolls, the mention of Qur'an has always been there. That the final revelation is coming. أَوَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُمْ آيَةً أَنْ يَعْلَمَهُ عُلَمَاءُ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ So you're asking for a miracle, huh? You want proof? Isn't it enough of a proof for them that the scholars of Bani Israel have already recognized that the final book is coming? And you know that. You used to go into battle with them, and they used to say the final revelation is coming. The final messenger is coming. And when he comes, he will wipe you out like Ad and Thamud were wiped out. And Iram were wiped out. He'll take you out like that. And they used to say that to the Meccans. The Meccans used to say the final book, they used to be told the final book is coming, the final messenger is coming. You better watch out. The Israelites used to tell them that. The Jews of Medina, Banu Qurayda used to tell them that when they fought with them. It's incredible. So Allah says, isn't that enough of an ayah for them? They're looking for a miraculous sign? وَلَوْ نَزَّلَّهُ عَلَى بَعْضِ الْأَجْمَعَجَمِينَ had, had we revealed this Qur'an on some foreigners, فَقَرَأَهُ عَلَيْهِمْ Then they read this on to them. Then, they, then he read, بَعْضِ الْأَجْمَعِينَ One of them. You know, then they would read it on to them, مَا كَانُوا بِهِ مُؤْمِنِينَ They wouldn't have, and he, he read it on to them, they wouldn't have believed in it. If he revealed this Qur'an to a non-Arab population, why would they have believed in it? They would have said, it's not in our language. Give it to us in our language. Aren't you grateful it's in your own language? You don't have to make an effort to learn it. You know? كَذَلِكَ سَلَكْنَاهُ فِي قُلُوبِ الْمُجْرِمِينَ However, that is how we have penetrated it deep inside the hearts of the criminals. Salaka to stick something deep inside. Usluk yadaka fi jaybik. Stick it deep inside. Salaka. So Allah says that this, I, this, you know, have you heard of the concept cognitive dissonance? Cognitive dissonance is you, you hear someone, but you, it's almost as though they're speaking a foreign language. You don't understand a word they're saying. Blocking it out. Blocking everything you're out. Oh, you're saying out. Allah already said most of them won't believe. Now Allah is explaining why. Because they are acting in regards to the Qur'an as though it's in a foreign language. They can't even process it. And this mentality has been penetrated deep inside their hearts by Allah. They deserve not to pay attention to this Qur'an anymore. لا يؤمنون به Now they're not going to be believing in it. حتى يراوا العذاب الأليم Until they see the painful punishment. Until then, just like all these previous nations with these guys, that's just going to have to be the case. فَيَأْتِيَهُمْ بَغْتَةً And that punishment then will come to them out of nowhere, without warning, all of a sudden. وَهُمْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ And they will have no realization. These people will have no clue what just happened. فَيَقُولُوا هَلْ نَحْنُ مُنْظَرُونَ Then they're gonna be saying, in that case they'll be saying, are we gonna be waited on? Are we gonna be given another shot? Can we be just at least, can you hold off a little bit? مُنْظَرُونَ Are we from those that are gonna be given a second opportunity? أَفَبِعَذَابِنَا يَسْتَعْجِلُونَ or, and is it the case 
that in, in the case of our punishment, our punishment meaning Allah is saying, the punishment that I keep promising, is that the punishment to keep asking for so quickly right now? So there's two ayat at two different times. Ayat on judgment day, punishment comes, these guys say, can we just get a second chance please? Can we get a little bit more time? And now let's, let's quickly reverse back to the present. Right now they're saying, why don't you bring the punishment? Why are you, t- why are you waiting? Let's bring it. You keep talking about the sun and the moon crashing, people coming out of their graves, let's have it. So Allah says, Look at the irony, they're rushing to our punishment right now. Did you observe, did you realize the Prophet is being asked? If we had hooked them up, if we had provided for them a lot, for a number of more years, if we kept giving them more and more wealth and sustenance, for a number of years, when? When they are about to be punished. Punishment arrived all out of nowhere, they say, can we have some more time? And Allah says, even if we give them a few extra years after that. Imagine the meteor shower came and it stopped right before it hit their head. Okay, just a couple of years and then we'll drop them on you. If that even happened. ثُمَّ جَاءَهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يُعَدُونَ Then way after, whatever they were promised eventually came at them. مَا أَغْنَى عَنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يُمَتَّعُونَ All of that time in between that they would have enjoyed wouldn't have come to their benefit at all. Once they are set in this way, when the heart is deviated, none of this would, would matter. Even if Allah gave them extra time after judgment day came, and they begged, please give us more time, and Allah did give them a number of years, those years wouldn't have been any good for them. ما أغنى عنهم ما كانوا يمتعون. Have you ever seen a lousy student who says, "I just failed the exam"? Yeah, the next next week is the makeup exam. He begs the teacher, "Can I just have a makeup exam? Please, 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 just give me one more chance, just one chance. That's all I ask." And the teacher says, "Fine. Next Friday is your makeup exam." Does that student go home and start studying right away? No. He goes up and says, "It's next week, man. I got time. Next week." And he plays video games, watches a movie or two, hangs out with his friends, the whole week goes by, right before the punishment, the next Friday he comes to the... Uh, uh, something came up this week. It was, really, it was a really difficult week. I had a family situation. What he means by family situation is my mom was yelling at me because I was watching movies all day. That's his family situation. But he's not going to spell that out, right? I had a family situation. When people are procrastinators, no matter how much extra time you give them, it doesn't make a difference. It does not make a difference. ما أغنى عنهم ما كانوا يمتعون وما أهلكنا من قرية إلا لها منذرون And we never destroy a nation except if it has a warner, if they have warners. In other words, you have a warner, which means either you take the warning and survive, or you don't take the warning and you're destroyed. Those are the only two options left. ذكرى You know, usually Allah says, ذلك did you get that? But this time he says, dhikra by itself, exclamation mark. That was a reminder, a reminder that was. I'm just letting you, I'm just reminding you, and dhikra is actually mubalaqa with, with, the, with the alif maqsura. Dhikra, a powerful reminder that the messenger, whenever he comes, that means we don't destroy unless there's a, there's a warner. And now that there is a warner, which means you're qualified for destruction. وَمَا كُنَّا ظَالِمِينَ and we're never ever ones that do wrong. When people who argue, why does God destroy towns? Ma kunna We're never, never wrongdoers. We gave enough warning. Wa ma tanazzalat bihi shayateen. And shaitans don't come onto him. They don't bring this. The, the Quran is not brought by shayateen. Shaitans don't come down with it. Devils don't read it onto him. Wa ma yandaghi lahum. And it's not becoming of them anyway. It's not appropriate for them. They can't. They don't have that kind of capacity. Wa ma yastati'oon. And they can't even do it. They, even if they want to capture some of the Qur'an as Angel Jibreel is bringing it down, they can't do it. إِنَّهُمْ عَنِ السَّمْعِ لَمَعْزُولُونَ They are denied access to hear it. مَعْزُولُ إِنَّهُمْ لَمَعْرُمُوا بِالنُّجُومُ مُنِعُونَ مِنَ السَّمْعِ When they are shot at with stars, they are forbidden from hearing. That's what the, the, the ma'zul is, denied. They're the ones that are denied. They don't have any access to this revelation. You see, we learned that angels and jinns are close to each other in interaction. One is creature of Nur, the other of Nar. They do have interaction with each other. And they do sometimes steal information from the angels too. But when this Qur'an came with Qur'an, Qur'an came with Ar-Ruh Al-Ameen, the one who guards the amana. Other places in the Qur'an will teach us, he's got a legion, muta'in. He's got an entire battalion that surrounds the revelation when it comes down. It comes down with, a, with like a squadron of angels. So the jinn can't even get close to it, to steal a little bit of it. They, can't, they don't even have access to see it. 
فلا تدعوا مع الله إلها آخر فتكون من المعذبين then don't you dare call anyone besides Allah to, wor- to, wor- to worship and obey and if you do then you'll be become from, you'll become from the those from those who get tortured وأنذر عشيرتك الأقربين and the prophet is told warn your close family members your extended family عشير comes from عشر ten also means the men of your family, the, the you know, responsible people in your family, the influential in your family. Find those and warn them, the closest ones that you can find. The, the surah dedicated so much of its space to telling the Prophet, مَا أَكْثَرُهُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ مَا أَكْثَرُهُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ Most of them won't believe, most of them won't believe, most of them won't believe. And now Allah says, okay, well most won't believe, why don't you just start with your family? You can't get the whole nation, just start with the closest members of your family. وَاخْفِضْ جَنَاحَكْ لِمَنْ تَبِعَكَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And the few that have believed, you should treat them like treasures. Humble yourself, lower your wings before them. Where did you see lowering the wings before? Isra. Isra. Children should lower the wings to the parents. Now Allah tells the messenger, he should lower the wings to the sahaba. He should be really humble in dealing with the sahaba. He should be extra courteous, kind, out of his way you know, generous with the companions because they are this huge ni'mah. Just like parents are a ni'mah to children, the sahaba are being told, described as a ni'mah to the Prophet wasallam. You should take extra care of them. Because the few that you have that believe are so valuable. From among the لِمَنِ اتَّبَعَكَ The ones that follow you. So appreciate this relationship. On the one hand, you have the followers of the Prophet wasallam who love him to death and they're following him no matter what. لَمَنِ اتَّبَعَكَ Who closely follows you from among the believers. And because they so closely follow you, you be so kind and humble to them. And when you're so kind and humble to them, it makes them even a more obsessive follower. النَّاسُ عَبِيدُ الْإِحْسَانِ At the extreme. People are slaves to goodness. When the leader is good to them, they turn around and they're, they're loyal. When the leader is good. So you go out of your way and show humility to those that have followed you. You don't have to be humble to any leaders of Quraysh. You don't have to do that. But be, close, be, be humble to them. So now there's two, there's two groups of people that the Prophet's attention should be on sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One, warn, still warn, just like everybody else was warned, who? Close family members, the closest of them. Two, be extra grateful and humble for your own followers. But then, فَإِنْ عَصَوْكَ Then if your family and these followers of yours, even if they disobey you, because that's a possibility, فَقُلْ إِنِّي بَرِيءٌ مِمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ Then you can even tell them, I have nothing to do with what you're up to. I'm, I'm disassociated from you as well. If they disobey you, then they have nothing to do with you. In this ayah, Allah does not say, وَإِنْ كَفَرُوا بِكَ قَالْ وَإِنْ عَصَوْكَ فَإِنْ عَصَوْكَ If they disobeyed you. He didn't say if they disbelieve in you. He said if they disobey you. If you disobey the Prophet ﷺ in Mecca, this calls for some serious reflection, folks. What does it mean to disobey the Prophet ﷺ in Mecca? Hijab hasn't been revealed. Food restrictions haven't been revealed. Alcohol hasn't been revealed. Five daily prayers haven't yet been revealed. Hajj hasn't been revealed. Fasting hasn't been revealed. None of the stuff you think of as Islamic behavior has been revealed yet. Then what following? What are they following? That's the, I mean, and what are they disobeying? The only work right now is the work of being with the Prophet ﷺ in his mission of delivering Islam to people. That's the only work right now. There's no other work. There's no other mission. All the other instructions of Islam, predominantly all of them, are going are to be revealed when? In Medina. There's a Makki Surah. So what, what, how can they disobey you? What disobedience will they show? We understand here what I was referring to before in Surah Al-Furqan, being with the mission of the Prophet ﷺ. The mission itself is an act of obedience. And abandoning that mission is an act of disobedience. فَإِنْ عَصَوْكَ فَقُلْ إِنِّي بَرِئُمْ مِمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ Then I am free from what you're up to. Allah talked before about, they have a'mal ukhra, they have other things they have to do, they're busy. They don't have time for this mission of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى الْعَزِيزِ الرَّحِيمِ And he's told in the beginning, like he was in the, uh, at the end, like he was in the beginning, you can p- continue to rely on the ultimately powerful, the ultimate authority, the always merciful. 
just trust him. You have these wonderful followers, you'll have some family that will become Muslim, but your reliance isn't on them. You don't rely on them, you rely on me. الَّذِي يَرَاكَ حِينَ تَقُومُ The one who sees you when you stand up in the middle of the night and pray. He sees you when you're praying. You know, this is a continuation, uh, an encouragement for the Muslims from Surah Al-Furqan. Surah Al-Furqan ended on a similar note. وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا They spend the night standing, making sajda and standing. And now the Prophet is being told, I see you when you're standing by yourself. The one, you, the one that watches you when nobody else can see you is the one you should rely on. وَتَقَلُّبَكَ فِي السَّاجِدِينَ What a beautiful reality. And he sees you going around um, in, in the company of those who make sajda. The Prophet's practice was, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that when he would finish his qiyam, he would go out in the middle of the night to the house, by, right by the houses of those that have come to believe, just to see if they're praying qiyam al just to get a hint. Maybe he can hear some Qur'an being recited. You know? And just get a glimpse, maybe they're making sajda. Just check in on them. Because he wants them to grow. So Allah says, you should rely on me. And I know you really want them to grow. And I see you when you pray to me. And I also see you when you go and check on them. وَتَقَلُّبَكَ فِي السَّاجِدِينَ وَتَقَلُّبَكَ فِي السَّاجِدِينَ Others say, تَقَلُّب also means your ability to see. You're turning around to, the, to those who make sajda. Meaning when the Prophet prays, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when somebody's leading in prayer, can they see what's going on behind them? No. But the Prophet ﷺ miraculously was given the ability to see the entire congregation behind him when he led prayer. And therefore, he would, when he would finish prayer, sometimes he would say, you know, you shouldn't be ahead of me in ruku and sajda. Don't get ahead of me in ruku and sujood. Oh, where did he get that information from? He just led the prayer. It's not like he knows anybody else went behind him. But he could see it. Allah gave him the ability. So Allah says, I see you, just like I've given you special ability to see the people who make sajda behind you. So that's the second meaning of وَتَقَلُّبَكَ فِي السَّاجِدِينَ إِنَّهُ هُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ Certainly he in fact is the ultimately hearing, the all-knowing. هَلْ أُنَبِّئُكُمْ عَلَى مَنْ تَنَزُّلُ الشَّيَاطِينَ Speaking of the devils, should I just tell you of someone who the, the, the devils do descend upon? The shayateen do come down on? تَنَزَّلُوا عَلَى كُلِّ أَفَّاكٍ أَثِيمٍ They come upon every, they, these shayateen in their legions, they come on to every single person that makes up vicious attack lies. The one who is engrossed in constant sin, athim, he's always in sin. And athim is a byproduct of afak also, the one who keeps on making lies, because the lies are spread. So any moment he's sitting, the consequences of those lies are being spread, and the sin is constantly being accumulated for him. So he's called athim, constantly taking in sin. That guy. That's the one that shayateen descend upon, so he can make those kinds of lies every opportunity he gets. يُلْقُونَ السَّمْعَ وَأَكْثَرُهُمُ الْكَاذِبُونَ They they uh, uh, they throw the hearing, meaning they catch some of the hearing. That's what it means here. They hear something from the angels sometimes. But most of them are liars. So they'll come and say something about, you know, fortune telling and this and that and the other. right? But most of it is lies that are made up. And people that follow them are also following lies. And most of them aren't on the truth either. But then the final group is mentioned. And what's the name of this surah? This surah is very poetic. It's very rhythmic. It's almost musical. And how it, if it's recited properly, this surah is incredible. It really is something. The, ayat, the surahs with short ayat are like that. So at the end of the day, Allah mentions the shu'ara. Poets. Poets were the philosophical leadership of Quraysh. The, their world view, their belief about life and the afterlife came from poets. Their belief about what they love and what they hate came from poets. The poets were also their entertainment industry. Their entertainment industry was also poets. The higher education in Arabia was what? Poetry. They were also their academics, their philosophers, their entertainers. They were the elite of that society from the cultural sense. Not the political sense, but in the cultural sense. Because always in a society you have political elite, you have financial elite, you have social elite. The poets were their social elite, the cultural elite. They set the standards of culture because they were the ones that people went to and listened to and they influenced them. But these poets, when they did their concerts, did they ask for money? Sure. That's how they live. They feed off of the recognition people give them. 
and they feed off of the money people give them. Components need two things. They need an audience that appreciates them, and they need money. The entire surah was dedicated to explaining that the Prophet ﷺ does not have a large audience in Mecca. Most of them won't believe. They don't want to hear what you have to say. This is in direct contrast with what kind of people? Poets. Poets love to get a huge audience. And if they don't get an audience, they quit. I couldn't find a fan base. I tried it. I went to a stand-up place. People threw shoes at me. I gave up. If I had a good audience, 100 people showed up, I should try it again. Maybe I'll get 200 next time. There's encouragement. So the, the contrast already is, look, if he was a poet, and the first 10, 15, 20 times you guys weren't interested, he would have what? He would have quit, just like a poet does. And then on top of that, the poet's second incentive is what? There's audience and there is money. What did Allah keep repeating in the anthem of all of the prophets? مَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ أَجْبٍ أَجْرٍ إِنْ أَجْرِيَا إِلَّا عَلَىٰ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ I don't ask you for any compensation. My compensation is with the master. I'm not asking you for any money. So Allah mentions the poets at the end and says, they don't follow you, but they love their poets. And the two things they say you want, you want to have control over us and you want our money. That's what they accuse the Prophet of, yes? Those are the two things that they know are true of who? Poets. And they say, we will not follow the Prophet because he wants money and he wants us to follow him. Well, the poet says, I want your money, and the poet says, I want you to follow me, and you follow him anyway? You guys are clearly confused. Your criticism of the Prophet is the very thing that you love about these poets. People that are way confused, way out there misled, beyond the point of return, those are the kinds of people that obsessively follow the poets. They obsessively, you understand the connection now? And the poets, are, like I said, are their entertainment industry. Which means when we study this, we should think about what industry? Our entertainment industry. Movies. Musical artists. Hip-hop, R&B, heavy metal. You know? Emo? Emu? You can never get that right. You guys know, right? Indie rock. Beavers and squirrels. <laughs> Radio Disney. You know, and people f obsess. You just want some tickets. You ever heard the radio? You just want some free tickets. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I can't believe it. This is the greatest day of my life. Obsessed. And Allah describes something about the fan base. This ayah is about the fan base. That one word, غاوون. People that follow entertainers, like obsessively, have no purpose in life. <laughs> they, have, they have no purpose in life. Their greatest goal in life is to be, to meet her backstage. That's it. That's all they live for. غاوون. Lost, confused, purposeless. And then Allah talks about them, the followers, and the entertainers themselves, both, and says, أَلَمْ تَرَ أَنَّهُمْ فِي كُلِّ وَادٍ يَهِمُونَ Didn't you observe that they enter into any which valley? Hama يَهِمُ is used for a camel to be lost. Hama فِي كُلِّ وَادٍ يَعْنِ كَانَ عَطْشَانًا الْجَمَلْ كَانَ عَطْشَانًا فَكَانَ يَبْحَثْ عَنِ الْمَاءِ فَهَامَ فِي كُلِّ وَادٍ A camel got lost in the desert, it was thirsty, couldn't find where to go, so he goes in this valley, and that valley, and that valley, the camel is wandering aimlessly, that's when Hama is used. Allah says, didn't you notice that these poets venture off into any valley, aimlessly? Meaning they go into any crowd trying to please? Also means they go into any subject trying to entertain. They make a piece of poetry. It wasn't that impressive. People didn't like it. Well, everything the, the actor, the artist, the singer, everything he or she does is for his audience. So if the audience, the customer didn't like it, he has to change his product, she has to change her product, so the customers do like it. So they change their style, they change their music, they change their lyrics. So that, oh, did you like this better? 
Is this better? And they say, yeah, that's pretty good, that's pretty good. Okay, let me do it again. They said, no, this is boring now. Okay, now I've got to figure out another way to entertain you. So they go into this and that and the other, and they keep trying new things to try to entertain. And as they keep trying to entertain, they realize, I'm running out of talent, so I have to compensate. So they do the most obscene, lewd, disgusting things to get attention. I can't get attention for my talents, so might as well get attention for like, I don't know, shaving my head, or getting arrested for drug abuse, or, you know, adopting a baby or something, or... At least I'll be mentioned in some, like, you know, magazine on the side of a grocery aisle, if not at the award ceremony. I just need to get mentioned. I'm obsessed with being mentioned. I really need to be remembered. People can't forget me. I shouldn't be a has-been. So they go off into any valley. And valleys, the imagery of valleys is important here. لِمَاذَا ذَكَرَ الْوَاد Why mention a valley? You're going down. You're, you're humiliating yourself. Going down is the image of humiliating yourself. Also means you're descending. By the way, when do you have more stability? When you're climbing down a mountain or going up a mountain? When do you have more stability? Going up. You have more control. Down, go, going down is far more dangerous. Far more dangerous. You know? So they're descending, they're leading themselves into danger. And you're, you're up here, you know what's here. You don't know what's down in the valley. You don't know what kind of animals, what kind of dangers lie there. And you don't even know if there's a way back up. Making your way down, gravity will help you. <laughs> Making your way up, getting your way back up, you have no way out. So these people humiliate themselves and degrade themselves and they can never find a way up. I also told you poets are, were the philosophers of that time. And in our time, philosophers... People or people that read a lot of philosophy and get entertained by that. One day they're on this philosophy, the next day they're on that philosophy. You know, the what if world. And you know what? When they caught up, get caught up in that valley, when they descend into that valley, sometimes they can't come out. There's no way you can bring them out. They just stay down there. Alam tara annahum fi kulli wadin yahimun. Look at the contrast with the, the messengers. The, the, this is so beautiful, you know, it's so deep. Poets keep changing their subject, their genre, their material, their philosophy, to try to keep the audience entertained. And prophets across generations have the same exact anthem. Same exact words, over and over and over again. The guy reading the surah is saying, why is, why is it repeating so much? Why can't it just say they said what they said before? Why is it repeating like that? Allah is hammering that point, and at the end of it, it says, here's the kind of people that keep changing their, their line. Those are the entertainers. Prophets aren't there to entertain you. They were given a very clear, direct message. They didn't go this way, that way, or the other way. They didn't have a lot, they weren't lost like, like the camel. They had a clear sense of direction. The straight path, straight, same speech. وَأَنَّهُمْ يَقُولُونَ مَا لَا يَفْعَلُونَ And they say what they don't do. They contradict themselves all the time. Artists will contradict themselves all the time. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَذَكَرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا And uh, Allah makes the exception, except those who believe and acted righteously. In other words, Allah didn't say all poets are evil. All, entertainments are e all entertainers are evil. There are those among them that believe and do the righteous thing, do the right thing. And by the way, I should mention one more thing. Who are the only kind of people that recognize that what Musa did, the greatest chunk of this surah, Musa, who were the only people who recognized it's not magic? Magicians. Who were the only people in society that are going to recognize this ain't poetry? Poets. The poets are going to be the ones that recognize it first. This is not poetry. We know poetry. This ain't it. So when the poets come to Islam, when the poets come to Islam, just like the magicians came to Islam, they are the strongest of the Muslims. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَذَكَرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Then they remember Allah a lot. And they remembered Allah a lot. وَانْتَصَرُوا مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا ظُلِمُوا And they aided themselves even after they had been wronged. وَسَيَعْلَمُوا الَّذِينَ and, and by the way, this last part, وَانْتَصَرُوا مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا ظُلِمُوا ظُلِمُوا they, were, they aided themselves, they helped themselves after they were wronged. It means they retaliated eventually. Even though the policy right now is you can't retaliate, Allah is alluding to the fact that soon, very soon, there's going to be the time for retaliation when the Muslims move to Medina. Just be patient for now. And soon the wrongdoers, the evildoers are going to find out what final place of return, what place to go back to will they be going back to? 
You know, people come to a concert, they listen to a poet, and they go back home. They go back home. It's like, you know, that scene. People leaving home to come listen to the poet, and then heading back home. Allah says, soon you'll find out which real place, which real home you're going to go back to. Soon the wrongdoers will discover that. Subhanallah. So with that, this beautiful surah comes to an end. Barakallahu li walakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim. Wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.